Today, we're going to take another look at the Canon R8. And this is going to be a slightly different video than usual because I've already done a detailed comparison with this and the R7 a few weeks ago. But I've been using this camera now for a little over a month. And I also just came back from a vacation to Korea and I had a great time with this camera there. So today, I thought instead of focusing on the specs and features, I thought I should talk more about um, my general opinions about this camera after using this camera for a while. And just to cut to the conclusion a little bit, I've actually really grown to like this camera. And to be completely honest, the R8 wasn't really one of the cameras that I was super excited about when I saw the list of all the cameras that were getting announced this year. Uh, just because I already kind of knew what it was going to be like and, you know, another $1,500 full frame camera, a camera that's too expensive for beginners, but too basic for pros because they've taken away all the features to protect the sales of their more expensive models. But after using this camera for a while, I did realize that some of the positives seem to far outweigh the negatives. And I'll explain why that's the case. But before we begin, I'd like to thank BNH for lending me this R8. And as always, they did not ask me to make this review or what to say in my reviews. I simply asked for the camera and they have graciously provided it. So after watching this video, if you think this is the right camera for you, please consider checking out their product link in the descriptions. And if you make a purchase through the link, you're not only supporting a great business, I also get a small commission from the sales and it doesn't cost you anything extra. So everybody wins. So thank you in advance and let's get back to the camera. Let's talk about the price first, because although price isn't necessarily a feature, it is kind of what makes this camera unique. And this might be surprising to some of you, but I actually think the price is quite reasonable. Some of you may remember about four years ago, Canon released a camera called the EOS RP for $1,300. And in my reviews of that camera, I did say that that camera is too expensive for what it is. And Canon did reduce the price of several months later uh, to $1,000. And even compared to that price, considering today's inflations, I think the R8 is a much better value than the RP was uh, for several reasons. First, the RP had a sensor from the old 6D Mark II, which was released back in 2017. And even back then, that sensor wasn't received that well. And when Canon put it in the RP, it was already two years old. But this sensor, the one in the R8, was from a brand new camera, the R6 Mark II, a camera that costs $1,000 more than this. And this sensor is amazing today. And dare I say, it's probably one of the best 24 megapixel full frame sensor that's on the market today. It has amazing color and dynamic range and the low light performance is far superior than any high end crop sensor cameras that cost more than this. And that gives Canon crop sensor users a great motivation to upgrade because if you're not a professional photographer, you may not care all that much about all the pro hardware features, but you're basically getting a sensor from a $2,500 camera for a $1,000 discount. Also, if you're an existing R6 Mark II user, you now have an option to buy a secondary camera with the same sensor from the R6 Mark II for $1,000 less without having to buy another R6 Mark II. And like I said, if you need those extra features, you should just buy another R6 Mark II. But um, for $1,000 less, having that option is only a good thing. And the second reason is the video specs. And um, the RP was an okay 1080p camera, but Canon was going through this weird phase where they would include 4K on their cameras just so they can market it as a 4K camera, but then they would, for whatever reason, take out dual pixel autofocus in 4K and also heavily crop it so it 
will become basically unusable. On top of that, at launch, for reasons that no one could understand, they took out 24 frames per second uh, recording option. So that made a lot of people angry. However, the RH video specs are very competitive against pretty much any other cameras today. Full frame 4K 60, 2R recording limits, and 180 frames per second, 1080. And I, unless I'm completely forgetting something, I can't think of any other cameras that can do all those things in this price range. So now that I made my points about the price, let me talk about my personal experience with this camera and why I think the positives outweigh the negatives. Let's start with the body design. And what I can say about the body is that I think Canon's done a decent job at making this camera feel simple, light, and small instead of just making it feel cheaper and worse. There are just enough buttons and dials for any advanced users and even for such a small camera, the grip feels very comfortable and although it pains me to say this, but thanks to the smaller battery, they were able to make the grip a bit straighter and more perpendicular to the body. So when I grip the camera with just my fingers, um, I don't need to grip the camera with too much tension. And while traveling with this camera, I didn't even bother putting the strap on this camera because it was just so easy to carry around. And the placement of the buttons and the shape of the grip combined with the lightness of the camera made it so easy to shoot with in any positions. And in addition to all that, Canon now has so many small and light native primes that pair very nicely with this camera, like the 51.8 and 24 1.8 and 16 2.8 and 35 1.8. And I think they just released the 28 2.8 a pancake lens. And what's also great is that all of these lenses are very affordable. And I know some of you might be thinking now, what about the lack of the second car slot or a bigger battery or IBIS? And obviously I do wish that R8 had all of those things, but in reality, that camera already exists and it's called the R6. So for the price you're paying, I don't think they're necessarily deal breakers. They're just more of minor inconveniences, really. To me, the battery life for shooting stills wasn't actually that bad, especially for just casual shooting while traveling. And even if I was shooting more, these batteries are so small and it's not a big deal if you have to carry a few more. But with the batteries, the bigger inconvenience while traveling is probably for those existing R5 or R6 users who are looking to get this as a backup camera because you're now gonna have to bring an extra charger for these different batteries because you can't share those between those cameras. And a lot of people ask me about the lack of IBIS and if they should be concerned about that. And to be completely honest, I really don't care much about IBIS nowadays because none of them seem to be still all that good enough for handheld videos. And even when I'm shooting stills, I still like to shoot as if I don't have IBIS, even with cameras with IBIS, and keep my shutter speed reasonably high because um, no matter how good the sensor stabilization is, it doesn't change the fact that your subjects can move unless you're only taking pictures of bricks. So to summarize, this was a bit of a surprise for me, but I've really grown to really like this camera and I've been really just enjoying using this camera, not necessarily because of any of its features, but because of its design and simplicity. I mean, there are lots of other small and light cameras if that's all I cared about, but none of them have this sensor and I almost forgot to mention it's great autofocus. And I don't know if it's exactly the same system that's in the R6 Mark II, but I'd be surprised if it wasn't because it works really, really well. I feel like I've just never seen such a simple and basic camera without any real weaknesses or compromises. Sure, it's not a perfect camera by any means. It does come with those inconveniences that I mentioned, but for the price that you're paying and for its simplicity, I think they're quite forgivable. And for that reason, I would highly recommend this to anybody. So that's gonna be it for me today. And if you have any more questions about the R8, just leave a comment down below and I'll try to get to them all. And thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.